hoping that we can address those and, and get an outcome that we can all live with. Thank you very much, Councillor Riley. Any further councillors? Um, I'd like to speak as well, and then I'll um, ask you to close the debate. Um, I'd also like to speak to this. I, too, am very torn about this. I absolutely hear you, and we don't want to cause any deterioration in your uh, lifestyle and your ability to get rest, and I value those things also very, very deeply. Very difficult sitting in this position where we've got a number of factors that we have to consider. One of those factors, as Councillor Riley pointed out, was if we reject this, for example, what is the likelihood that often an applicant will appeal at VCAT and a number of the conditions that we might impose here, if it's appealed at VCAT, might get taken out. So it actually could end up as a worse proposal than something that we could have approved that had tighter conditions. So it's this really fine balance and it's a really tricky position because sometimes we can go, look, we'd much rather refuse this, but then we are facing the threat of it going to VCAT and it being a much worse proposal. So we're trying to use what power we have to make it a better proposal. So that's the real tension for us here this evening. The prior application, to my knowledge, while it had a restriction in terms of hours on the, in the outside space, it actually didn't have a time limit restriction for the internal space. So theoretically, it meant that they could operate much, much later than even this applicant has proposed and the conditions that the officers have recommended. So you've got to think, are the hours that we impose going to be an improvement on the current permit that they could actually build any day now. So that's one of the things we've got to think about as well. Could we actually make this better than the current permit that's there? So there's a number of conditions that officers have put into the report, reducing the patron numbers to 200, which is less than what the existing permit allows for. Tighter hours so that they end up much earlier. So it's asking for a number of things that the current permit actually doesn't have. So that's what we have to think about. If we refuse this, they can build that, which has worse conditions, or they could have VCAT and get their 350 patrons. So it's a balancing act. We can't predict what's going to happen in the future, even if we put tight conditions on it, whether they're going to go to VCAT or not and appeal it. But we're trying to give us the best chance of succeeding here to get a good outcome for you guys. That's really front and centre for me and I'm sure my fellow councillors as well. So I've heard that uh, Mayor Davidson's foreshadowed another motion, an amended motion. So I won't be supporting Councillor Bolton's motion because I believe uh, uh, Mayor Davidson's motion is a much gives us a much stronger chance of success and getting better conditions for you guys. So that's why I won't be supporting Councillor Bolton's motion. Councillor Bolton, you should close yes, the debate. Um, I'd like to close the debate. I think councillors in fighting on this motion should consider whether you would personally like to live in this scenario. I think um, we have to think about that what, that, what it would be like for us personally. I don't know if anyone actually, any of the other councillors, in, I'm in the closing of the debate, so I can't actually ask people how close they live to a pub. Um, but I think if we would not like to live in that closeness to a pub that was operating seven days a week, seven nights a week, I think we should be supporting this resolution and knocking back this proposal. I don't think it's good enough to just say, like it and lump it. I also think it's a bad negotiating strategy to just say, well, we'll let something bad or something terrible go past to make it in, in, in the hope that the applicant doesn't propose something even more terrible. I think that all that does is you have more and more terrible proposals come up. It's sort of like a reward, I, I would say. My understanding is that um, there is already in existence a restaurant permit, um, but that if they want to operate the restaurant, they will have to apply for a liquor licence. I'm not sure if that's just for um, if they want to sell alcohol or if that covers BYO as well. But so there would be a po opportunity for some more controls if um, if they want to operate as a restaurant and sell alcohol because they'll have to apply for a licence. I think it is okay. Yes, I know. I can understand there are good motives of councillors trying to you know have some restrictions um, to try and make the pub more like a restaurant. But still, you can't get away from it. The purposes of the two businesses are quite different. Um, the purpose of a restaurant, even though I know some applicants try and, you know, sell a few sn a snacks um, in order to um, say that it's a restaurant, because I have been aware of a proposal <coughs> like that. Um, but the, you know, a pub, a pub's purpose is 
focused on selling alcohol. It's, it's different. Um, and I think it should be in a different location. And I think we've already heard from one of the residents the impact of living close to a very noisy, um, a very noisy environment. And actually, um, noise and sleep deprivation taken to extreme levels are a form of torture. Now, I'm not saying that that situation, this particular situation, but it is, um, you know, depending on how extreme things go, if, if this proposal is allowed to get through, then, you know, it does have a very serious impact on people's, um, on people's lives. I mean, if it was much further away and it was more of a landscape area, I might feel different about this proposal. But look, I think that photo, in, in my mind, and, and there's over 100 people living uh, in close proximity, we are going to destroy the lives of a lot of people, including renters who feel um, that they can't speak up because um, they don't actually own the property. Thank you, Councillor Bolton. I'll now put Councillor Bolton's. Can't, sorry, I'm sorry, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. We have closed that time for objective. I'm sorry. We have to. We are in formal procedure. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm sorry. You will please have to sit down. We are in the formal meeting. We are in the formal. We will. We are in the formal part of the meeting. Excuse me, ma'am. Please. We are in formal procedure. Formal meeting procedure, and we must proceed. I will now put Councillor Bolton's motion to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? I declare that lost. Can it be um, recorded who voted for it? Certainly. So I'll call it for division. All those in favour? Councillor Bolton, Farnley, and Kapanos. And the remaining councillors against. Yep. Councillor Davidson. Um, I'd like to now propose an alternate motion and um, I'll wait um, until we have it up on the screen. Certainly. So that we can, the gallery can follow along with what the alternative is. Okay. So I'll go through the points that are already up there and then there will be a few additional points as well. And then if I have a seconder, I'll speak to the reason for this proposal. So the added condition is condition 17. Offensive odours must not be discharged beyond the boundary of the site. The added condition to uh, condition 20, these are the additional words. A street light must be constructed um, and operational at Stockdale Avenue frontage of 22 Pentridge Boulevard to eliminate uh, pedestrian access along Stockdale Avenue. This light must operate between dusk and dawn. And then uh, renumbered conditions 17 to 40. Um, and yeah, to incorporate those two additional points. Then moving over um, to the patronage numbers um, at point number five. The outdoor beer garden area must not exceed 75 patrons at any one time. Uh, then moving on to the trading hours. So to limit the trading hours on Friday to Saturday to 11 p.m. Yeah. And then the outdoor beer garden area, which is point B, um, from Monday to Sunday, from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. on any day. Excuse me, no members of the gallery. From the gallery. Excuse me, members of the gallery. I please ask you to respect the councillor speaking and please not to interject. Thank you. Um, okay, and we've covered those other two points. Now, I realise that this is quite an emotive issue, but. When we sit here, we sit here with two hats. We sit here with the hat as being a resident ourselves of Moreland and the hat of being on this panel, which is an administrative body that has certain powers. And we look at what, what powers we can operate in and what position we are when we go to VCAT as well. And we've got to weigh those two up. And what are our chances of success if this appeals to VCAT? This is a re the reality of the situation. It's not an emotive argument and we're trying to do what is in the best interest of the community. Because with all the discussion about being next to a childcare centre and 
I concur with uh, my fellow councillor Riley. There are many childcare centres near various venues in Moreland. It, we, we need to look at the reality, not the idealistic approach, because the reality is that you are an activity centre. And they have changed their application from, no further comments, sorry. They have changed their application from a restaurant to this venue. So I, the other thing I wanted to raise as well is I'm extremely disappointed that the applicant hasn't had the courtesy of coming here tonight to answer questions and to respond to you as well. I think that's completely dis discourteous and it's, um, he's, he's not here to answer councillors' questions. Okay. So it's very, in my view, very shameful that he hasn't attended. Um, so we'll look at the venue itself. The venue has a condition of 75% seating and that's akin to most, most restaurant types. They have 75% seating and there is this beer garden outside. The limiting of the patronage numbers is to help mitigate that noise as well as um, you know, all the other issues that may arise from it as well. We've limited the trading hours and um, the offensive odours which has been raised by um, the objectors. And these are all enforceable aspects that we can enforce. And as Councillor Kavanagh mentioned previously, that other issue that was raised was not something enforceable. And Council is very willing to work with Victoria Police to help um, this area in itself. No, no further comments. I'm sorry. You've had your sorry, excuse me, sir. I'm sorry. The time for I'm so I'm sorry, sir. The time for questions and comments from the gallery um, has expired. We had that at the start of the meeting. We are now in formal meeting procedure, and the councillor has a floor. I'm sorry, sir, but you cannot uh, speak while the councillor is speaking. Yeah. Please proceed, Councillor Davidson. Okay. I think that that sums up the points that we've changed, and we've done them in what we believe is in the best interest of the people that are living near there. So um, I'll. If I Thank, yes, Councillor Kavanagh well, seconded, oh, apologies, yes. I didn't uh, note that previously, but Councillor Kavanagh did Thanks. second it. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Mayor Davidson. Councillor Kavanagh. The amended resolution can be put on the other side as well. Certainly. We'll just get the amended wording. And Councillor Kavanagh wishes to speak as a seconder? All right, I think Councillor Davidson's uh, put it very well. Um, look, and I think the fact is that it is an activity zone. Um, I do have an opportunity to reply to Councillor Bolton's question. No, I don't live next to a hotel, although my daughter did live directly above a hotel in the activity centre of Docklands for five years. And in fact, to be honest, it was surprising how limited trouble we did have. And I do think that Councillor Bolton's point is a good one, but, uh, and I've mentioned on a number of occasions, I try to imagine if my mother was living next door to the property. But in fairness, I do that when it's a neighbourhood character or the zone that she lived in. In, lived in, whereas this is an activity zone, and therefore there are different levels of amenity in an activity zone. There's uh, it's clearly right? people who live on Sydney Road, who live in an activity zone in Coburg, expect that there will be noise from the trams, etc., etc., that you won't wouldn't expect in some other um, things. But in saying that, I, 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 I think generally her point is a valid one. I do try to make decisions in that regard as to if the people most close to me were directly affected, the most directly affected residents, how would I be voting? And that's the way I do try to, to, um, to decide uh, aspects of my voting. But I do think it's important uh, as well that we do sit here as a responsible authority and we need to be able to come up with something that we can defend at VCAT and that we can, we can ensure that we, we think that we have a very strong case. I think the conditions that have been placed on by the alternative resolution, both what originally the officers had put forward and even strengthened by Councillor uh, Davidson's uh, motion is a, is, is a strong one, uh, a very strong one. And so therefore I'm supportive of it and I hope my fellow councillors are. Thank you, Councillor Kavanagh. Are there further councillors who should speak for the, for the motion? I'll speak against it. Yes, Councillor Farley. Uh, yes, yes, for <laughs> or against. Um, yeah, okay, I'll just I'll speak uh, against this um, uh, motion. I, I'd really just to address a, a point made a little earlier. I'm not happy with the comparison to say, hang on, it's an activity centre, um, you know, it could be in Brunswick, it's an activity centre, so, you know, would you agree with it in Brunswick? Uh, bad luck, it's an activity centre. It just does, that doesn't wash with me. I, we've got neighbourhood residential zones across different municipalities, and they're all neighbourhood residential zones, but guess what, they're adjudicated differently. Uh, there are different type of businesses in Coburg and this activity centre than there are in Brunswick. There are different type of people that live in those areas. Some are more transient, some are more um, the, in this particular area. Some people decide to uh, uh, actually live uh, home investors. So 
Uh, I'm, that doesn't wash me. I think you've got to use a little bit of content and uh, content's judgment. For me, um, this feels like residential area. When I walk through and I see the residents, I talk to the residents, it doesn't feel like Sydney Road, Brunswick. So you've just got to use that sort of judgment call here. You know, I haven't been elected here to be a planning officer. I've been here to represent the residents and uh, it just doesn't feel right to put a pub right next door to the residents' homes. Thank you, Councillor Farnley. Are there any further comments from councillors? Yes. Yes, Councillor Riley. Uh, again, I'll just stand here to um, reiterate the issues. I, this is a difficult issue and I appreciate the fact that it's important just to, to state these, the facts that we are trying to get the balance right. In respect to your comments, Councillor Farnley, this is a development site and it, is a, it actually is a development site. Most of it is still to be developed and the, therefore the activity zone is still to be coming. So, you know, I think it is fair to draw a, a comparison to South Brunswick, but it's also fair to draw a comparison to the City of Melbourne, which is an activity zone, as is the Docklands. And I advocated 20 years ago against the, what a lot of Docklands is going on about. Unfortunately, the Victorian laws and rules allow these things. So to, to try and compare it to a neighbourhood zone, I think Councillor Kavanagh has made a very valid point there in terms of would I want to live there or would I want my grandmother or my mother to live there? Um, in this instance, it's an activity zone which is going to have mixed uses. And unfortunately, they're going to be coming up against one another. I know that the application was originally for a restaurant and council officers are trying to do their best to actually make sure that this um, looks and smells like a restaurant, even if it's called a pub. And so, therefore, the noise mitigation, the, the odour um, uh, monitoring and so on have been taken. In fact, I know it's not going to please everyone, but we need to try and get um, an outcome here that attempts to try and please everyone and um, so I just want to uh, stand and address those issues at this point so I support the motion. Thank you Councillor uh, Riley. Councillor Bolton. Um, I think even if you live, I mean we meant to have some degree of concern for residents amenity wherever they live in the suburb. Now obviously um, yes there is going to be more noise in um, central activity centres and so forth, but it doesn't mean that doesn't mean that we have to pay no attention to the amenity of those residents who happen to live in a residential growth zone or um, an activity centre. I think we do need to we do need to listen attentively to residents' issues and consider if things have overstepped the mark. And in my book, this oversteps the mark. Um, and this is, you know, over 100 residents who, who live in very close proximity. And I think if we basically say yes to this, we're basically saying, stuff you. I mean, I think I, that's, my, that's my feeling um, with, with, with this proposal. I think the residents have described the scenario um, that they experience now and um, and the impacts that this will have. And I, I think, and it's also not the case. It, these are different uses. Um, a pub and a restaurant is still different, even though, you know, often owners might try and slide, slide the, the difference over. I, I think we actually do have to pay some attention to the amenity of residents who live in activity centres. Um, especially as they were promised X and they're being, it's being proposed that they get Y. Um, I, so, you know, I think they haven't moved into this area expecting that it would be a pub. It'd be different if the pub was already there and they moved in. I, I think later on, I think that would be a totally different scenario to actually having something like this plonk there after you've been living there for a number of years and you've been told it would be something quite different. Thank you, Councillor Bolton. Um, Councillor Tepanos, yeah, and I'd like at, to at comment after that as well. Repetitive, but I, I just can't help but join the debate again because I hear that this site is being compared to Brunswick and Docklands, and I mean, this goes to my point of there are activity centres and activity centres, and they're not all the same, and they, they're really not. And you really need to have a look at not so much what's on paper or what's going to be planned, but what is actually there. I mean, we don't know how the rest of the site is going to be developed, and we don't. It doesn't matter if they say that they're going to build 
uh, more restaurants, a cinema, uh, uh, you know, a hotel. We don't actually know until something is built because they go in and they change it all the time. And in fact, what I'm finding is um, that quite often in some of these activity centres that are quite small and not best serviced by public transport potentially and in amongst all other development, is that they build more apartments because apartments are more... Um, they make more money out of apartments, and that's what we're seeing. So if I have a look at on Stockdale Avenue to the right of the site, what do we have? I mean, yeah, maybe the residents can, can help us out. Are there, are there any shops or restaurants or is it all apartments? It's apartments. And I look at the left of the site and I see more apartments. Cancer Tepanos, Cancer Tepanos, not the time to have sure. But my point is that you're seeing, uh, you're not seeing a, a, a centre that is being built like what you would see in Brunswick and the Docklands with a whole range of activities that have occurred. You might see a small coffee shop or a small office space, but you are 90% seeing apartments in this precinct. So I think that needs to be taken into consideration. And I bet by the time the rest of it is developed, uh, even... The, um, even the more difficult historical areas, you're going to see predominantly apartments and, you know, the structure plans call for 18 storey towers in some of these areas. And guess what? They are 90% apartments. So to say it's an activity centre and it's like Docklands and it's like Brunswick, I, I don't think it's the same. I think it's more of a residential area. And I know that that's not what the paper says and the planning scheme says, but I think that is what's being built. And we need to be respectful for that. And in making this decision, we need to not be concerned too much about what VCAT may say, but what are we thinking right here, right now? Is it appropriate to have a pub within what seems to be a few metres of people's balconies and of people's open um, space living areas? And and I excuse, excuse no. me. Please, I assume there's no interjections. Please, and, no interjections. And, and, and excuse me, Sorry. Councillor Tapanos. Just one moment, Councillor Tapanos. I could please ask members of the gallery. Please don't interject while Councillor is speaking. We are in the formal yeah. meeting procedure. He's not asking Sorry. the question that Councillor Tapanos was out of line to ask questions for discussion because that I'm is not, not an appropriate use of this time. So Councillor Tapanos, could I please ask you to address the chamber and your fellow councillors? Sure. Thank you, um, Chair. Um, so look, I think when you have a look at what is likely to be built what is being built um, and the proximity that it is being built to this subject side, um, it would just be unreasonable to build a pub um, operating um, uh, with serving alcohol. Um, and I think it's just asking way too much for the residents who have purchased and invested in that area. And look, had it been on time in Brunswick, I would have had a different view, but it's not. Thank you, Councillor Tapanos. If I could add a few further comments to the comments I made uh, in the previous debate with Councillor Bolton's motion. Just to reiterate, this is a really, really difficult decision, right? When we, one that we don't take lightly. We are considering a number of factors. And one of the things that we have to consider is if we refuse this tonight, we know that there is a very high chance, if not a 